And sir, please spotlight also. Start. As Colin Powell rightly said, a dream does not become a reality through magic. It takes determination, sweat, and hard work. Good afternoon, respected principal, ma'am, teachers, members of the management, and my fellow students. This year, our school is going to be celebrating its golden anniversary. And today, we are going to be celebrating the achievements of its students under this program from local to global inspiring Mirais. Today, I have the privilege to introduce one of our stellar alumni, Ms. Meenu Prasad, batch of 2007, and also Miss Earth India 2021. She has a host of achievements to her credit and is a firm believer that your ultimate passion drives you to win the intensity of your goals and achievements in life. Not only is she a well-reputed fashion educationist, but she's also the head of Qatar's first ever Italian fashion school, Istituto di Moda Burgo. Pardon my pronunciation, ma'am. Ms. Prasad is an alumni of Mira Model School, who graduated in 2007 and was a member of our very own prefectorial board. She then started her own journey towards becoming a renowned fashion designer and educationist with an experience of over 10 years in the field. After that, she graduated from NIFT and went on to do her master's in design. She has worked with numerous fashion houses and brands such as Anna Sui in Paris, Zara, Ted Baker, and many more as a buyer, as well as a senior merchandiser. She has also worked with Gaurav Gupta, who is a very famous Indian designer. Along with that, she has also been involved in training women fashion aspirants under the Indian government's MSME sector and has been a sought after fashion speaker since the last few years. Being a faculty member at Nottingham Trent University, Ms. Prasad has written a plethora of fashion design assessments. She currently resides in Doha, Qatar, and last year she was crowned Miss Earth India 2021. We are extremely proud of you, ma'am, and we're so thankful that you are an alumni of our school. So here's a special film depicting your journey. born and brought up in New Delhi, India, and I'm currently resident at Doha, Qatar. I'm married to a businessman who settled in Doha, Qatar, and I am a mother of a beautiful daughter whose name is Hiti. She's three years currently. My profession is that I am a fashion designer, and currently I'm a founding member of first ever Italian fashion school of Qatar, Istituto di Moda Burko. The school is a franchise body from Milan, Italy, and I have got a great opportunity to bring such a vocational concept from Italy to Doha. I have participated in this uh, glamorous pageant, which is Mrs. India Us 2021, because I feel that this is a glorious platform. It's it's amazing platform where women get more confidence. Women is is more open to talk her, her thoughts her ideas and i believe that i want to create and set an example for many women who are already in their cocoons they are still not able to come out of their cocoons because they are dealing with their regular life with their womanhood with their motherhood i accept that we women have different roles but i feel that if you have a dream don't let your dream sleep let them wake up I have found like numerous changes, numerous positive changes after participation and being the finalist in this Mrs. India Earth pageant 2021. I believe 
that you know once you have got an opportunity to retrieve yourself from your normal life and face many people on the stage i think that's the great opportunity and i'm really glad that you know today i i feel more confident i feel like more stressless and i believe that i will going to fly very soon but i don't want to fly too high that i will forget the roots of my life so i believe as my father says always remember your roots wherever you reach in life you must remember your roots and always come forward if you are established for those hold your hand who need you the most so after having these positive changes after being a finalist in this beautiful mrs india earth page I believe that I want to inspire many women because I remember that my husband always supported me to break my own stereotypes and even breaking the stereotype of society so I feel that there is no rule and regulation or any calculus for following your dreams so the only message to all the women out is there that please don't think too much don't think about the society don't don't think that you will fail i believe each and every step towards your dream is another message to several women i'm very grateful to all the family members of mine who are even staying in doha qatar or staying in india they all are supporting me in each and every preparation for this pageant see winning and losing is a part of life but doing your best is something which stays in your now and i am a very confident lady and i believe that there is no barriers to chase your dreams and lastly but not the least i would like to thank mrs ritika vinay and vinay idhawa who are the founding directors of mrs india arts pageant and hcwa philanthropy partners and the whole entire team of mrs india arts 2021 i'm extremely thankful to all of you I'm sure this video has sparked a feeling of motivation in all of us. Uh, now I please request you, ma'am, to take the stage and inspire our students. Uh, firstly, thank you so much for uh, such a great and warm welcome. Uh, words are not enough, but I'm feeling so happy and humble today. Uh, I feel that you know each step in your life is learning, and we all are here to inspire each other. being a proud meerite i think i will never forget the kind of foundation school had built for all of us and i'm sure you all are at the future shining stars uh, i have a beautiful presentation for you all which talks about my my journey throughout and i'm sure uh, this will going to give you a lot of inspiration and booster today and when tonight when you will sleep you will remember me so let's take a look of in presentation i'll just going to share it now uh i hope ras sir i can share my presentation now uh it has not come yet yes you are a presenter now at the right top corner na just uh, after the mic uh, mic icon you'll find yes. a up arrow that is yeah. the uh, yeah there you have to click to share yeah so we'll just take a two more two more minutes i'll just acha one up. more thing if your presentation has sound right no there is no sound oh then it's fine then just share i'm trying to share only but i don't know it's getting a bit slow so after clicking on the up arrow na you will get below screen window you just click on screen and then say okay yeah yes i'm going to share my desktop only is my desktop visible now yeah it is visible so can you see my presentation yes ma'am you all can share uh, you all can see my presentation right yeah yeah please okay. go ahead all right so um i'm very glad today and 
I want all of you, those who are sleeping, you can get up. I know you have come up from the class <laughs> and I'm behaving like a principal today so uh, or a teacher. So just give me a little more attention what we are speaking. Yes, I think uh, a wonderful, wonderful, um, you know, uh, welcome was already given and you already know now half of my achievements. What let's just take it to this. So <clears throat> as I said, the foundation block, the foundation block is of my life is my school, the foundation. Uh, since from nursery uh, under late Mohini ma'am and until Sadna ma'ams, I think I never changed the school. So the best part is that the 14 years of my life was always associated with Mira Model School. I never changed any school and I believe that it was such a wonderful sink in school that even if there was a situation where I'm supposed to change, but I never changed the school. I convinced my parents and I never changed the school. So I think this is, building is very rememberable for me because it's a playground and then in the front there is a rock climbing shed. And I think, I don't know, so many years, so many relay races, uh, so many um, prayer meets. I think we have spent here time and I'm sure you all are also doing it before Corona. Uh, this classroom where you see the other mathematics teacher is there. Uh, but uh, this classroom was actually uh, the medical classroom and I put this picture uh, specifically because I, I've been into this classroom. So obviously it's a beautiful memory. I have my last picture in front of you, which was obviously with my teachers. They all can see now and remember. Uh, Shelly ma'am was there and other teachers like chemistry teacher and other teachers like Preeti ma'am and all of them were there. And uh, I think that was my last group picture I had. Now, very important thing. I, I just wrote a few things and I want you to just listen to me now here. The real life challenges starts, the struggle, career choices, qualifying steamed college entrances, exam, family pressure, teachers motivation, expectations, no good percentage for admission. I am sure that 90% of the student currently in 11th and 12th grade, or rather I would say starting from 10th grade high school, you all are having these kind of scenarios around you yes or no yes okay yes, so today i will relieve you yes ma'am i will definitely relieve you today because i want to change your mind here i want to tell you that how precious all of us are and no matter whatever percentage you have or whatever kind of uh, you know like like you performing in in academics uh, that's not really a cause i think you need to be a great human being, very important and very focused of what you want. Sometimes what happens, you know, we are listening others and we are listening parents and teachers, everybody. I don't say that don't listen them, listen them, but don't forget that, you know, your heart and mind is the perfect combination. Sometimes you say, no, just listen with the heart, but I'm very practical woman here. I always listen hard, but qualify my, my, my brain as well. So I feel that uh, career choices nowadays is 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 not like before you know and are not if you go back like a 15 20 years back there was a peer pressure you know that oh my god i have to be an engineer or a doctor or i want you to be you know i'm not getting good percentage will i get a great uh, college to study in can i can i get like a uh, like a uh, best uh, delhi university college so i think there were a lot of um, you know like a uh, uh, you can say thoughts going on in the stage when you are in 10th 11th 12th so I feel that, you know, uh, that stage was that, that you should just focus on what you want. And I'm not saying that, you know, uh, because I also was never a great student. Rather, I was an average student. This is how I will put it. In 10th grade, I have got like 78%, uh, but in maths and science, uh, it was aggregate 85%. Yes, but then still, I feel um, that was not a call. Because uh, percentage and marks and all this, all this is not just the only, uh, you know, way to judge you. There are many other things, you know, and you can't be perfect in all the subjects. Rather, I would say I cannot be perfect in all the subjects and I cannot be all rounder. That is also for sure. Very few have that technique, you know, to have it. So I feel that you have to change your mind in this aspect. Be free, study hard. I'm not saying that don't study, study hard, but don't make study as a pressure on your head because if it becomes a pressure, Anyway, you're not performing great in the exam. So here the, the motive here is that, that you know, uh, we, we have to be in a very um, calm mode in these uh, particular 
uh, you know, grades in our life. And we can just study hard, enjoy. And this, this is a very reincarnation stage because after this, you are going to move to the university and colleges. So, of course, you, you, you will going to go enter in a new phase after this. So I think this, this period, don't pressurize yourself. Don't pressure your brain because your brain have so many loops. You know, we have temporal loop. We have cerebral loop. Those loops will, will tangle with each other. You have to make your brain relax. 50% of a problem is solved from your brain. So you have to change your thought and be positive about everything. Now, relating to my life, honestly, I was, in, if you would ask me like in journal, I was a medical student. In 10th, I got a good percentage in maths and science. So I got a medical uh, stream. When I went, I, my name was very much there on the board. And I was happy <coughs> because my family uh, was always wanting me to become a doctor. And I was very much inspired from few of the doctors already existing in the family. So I, th I was like not wondering, but I was happy. I was like, OK, yeah, I've got medical, so let's just study. <coughs> I studied 11th and 12th grade with medical. Shelly ma'am has witnessed whatever I was. Even if I was in 11th and 12th with the medical, I never left any artist competition. I never left anything which is uh, related to art or something creative. I was always involved. I was a kind of little, um, you know, I would not say that I was very popular student, but I would rather say, yes, I was like a well off student and, uh, you know, like a very, uh, very uh, simple girl with 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 limited additions in front of her. So I was uh, always thinking that, you know, I'm and in fact, I have took admission in Akash Institute, which is for medical entrance exam preparation. You wouldn't believe I wasted my two years and I wasted more than one lakh rupees of my dad just to study for medical entrance exam. But never know the life has something else for you. I studied. I'm not saying I didn't study it. I studied. I qualified the exam. There was only one exam which somehow I gave because I just used to be in touch with my physics teacher and she was held up to be my class teacher, Shelly ma'am. I think I will always keep her in my conversation because she's such an important part of my life. Um, and she always used to say me that, uh, why don't you join NIFT? So that moment of time, I didn't know what is NIFT. But later when I researched about it, I realized, OK, it's a National Institute of Fashion Technology, which is under the edges of Ministry of Textile in India. And it's one of the best college you could ever find. Like, for example, in medical, you have Maulana Azad, AIMS, similar pattern, uh, you know, in, in field of design, you have the NIFT or NID. So I just filled the exam. There was no preparation, nothing I did it. When I went to the exam, there was some creative ability test. <clears throat> there were some questions from maths, some general knowledge, and of course the artistic. I just gave the exam without any preparation because I had so much studied already in medical exam that I had nothing left to study in fashion designing exam. So I just went and I gave the exam. After a few days when the results were out, you wouldn't believe. I mean, I, I qualified Molana Azad. I qualified Christian Medical College and I qualified Bharti Vidya Peet. Three of them were offering me BDS or MBBS. But there was one exam. Which I never expected that I will get into it. And suddenly the pop up message come. You have been selected for NIFT. My God, I never expected. But I, I, I just that moment of time, my mind got tricked. I said, OK, fine. I have got a NIFT. So let me just think about it. I, I still have time. So. I remember they were entering the qualifying letters in front of my dad and my family. And I was like, you know, these are my qualifying four letters. What should I do? And the counseling for NIFT and uh, Bharti Vidyapit was collapsing on the same day. So my dad said that we are giving you a night. Think about it and let us know what you want. We are very much supportive. Thank God my parents were very, very supportive. They never said anything. They never lose patience on things that they have spent so much money in a cash institute and so much money in buying the entrance forms. They never lost their patience with me and in fact they told me that okay fine um we'll we'll wait for your decision so that night had made me think so much i just closed my eyes and i recall all my years in mira model school i was thinking every time i'm being so creative every time i'm going in so many other places every year i have a certificate from the school in like for example i remember there was a third grade and shantanu saw was there he was an art teacher and in third grade, I have got a stick color India award, which was like overall from the zonal reason, uh, the stick color has done a competition in arts. 
<coughs> and I have placed first in that. Then I was whole night thinking about so many achievements and uh, then I realized that what am I doing? I should not be a doctor. I'm meant to be some creative person and I should do what what is best for me. Why would I just li listen my family pressure or or something which is historically or genetically or hereditarily uh, impressed on me or impressed if there is an impression on me? I should just do what my heart and mind says. And when whenever I'm calculating as a as a medical student, the calculation says that, you know, the, the, the circle, if you see like a normal circle, a circle has a diameter and diameter is uh, like a half of radius. So basically we know that multiply by two into radius. Still, if I start from one point, I will go to close from that point only. So the circle is revolutionary. It's cyclic. So then I, I just get up in the morning. I got up so fast, dress up nicely on that day, really nicely dress up on that day. And I told my dad, dad, I'm ready. You start, you did. He made the demand draft of two particular institutions. And I said that I'm going to go to NIFT. I'm, I'm, I'm just tripping. I trip all the three um, letters of uh, selection in front of my dad. And there was only one letter left that was left in my hand was NIFT. And I went and I did my admission. I think that day, and today, I'm very happy what I did. <laughs> and I think you should stand by your decision. So coming back to next slide, uh, I put this slide. Uh, it's not very clear, though, but it says, can we skip to the good part? I think very trending in TikTok nowadays. So I think this was a time when I said, can I skip to the good part? And the good part was that I became a designer, a very good designer. One strong decision, lifetime achievements and joy. So I think these are the three things which I realized that, you know, sometimes you should combine your heart with the mind. Don't do only decision with the heart and don't do decision only with the mind. Both of them have an important and crucial role. So I got, uh, you know, like I already mentioned half of the things. So the journey, basically the my beautiful journey has begun. I've been part of it. I worked in NIF for four years, <clears throat> had a wonderful time. And then later after graduating from NIFT, I started working with very good. I, I was good performer there, not very great performer. Again, I would say I just had 6.5 CGPA because I was good at theoretical, but in practical, I was not that great. So, OK, finally, I got a degree in my hand and I started working. I've got a good placement because of my vocal ability, thanks to the school, because if they have not nurtured me, I would have not spoke to them in that confidence level during the interviews. So. It was amazing. I, I, I got selected in, in the placements itself in uh, Delhi Hoskas and then it was later never looking back. I started working with so many prestigious export houses brand. I think this list is not enough. There are several endless, but I just put the, the ones which I closely work. So H&M, Zara, Debenhams, Gallery Lefite, uh, Orient Craft. It was a fashion house in a very well known fashion house and then Tommy Hilfiger. And I think there were so many other places I've worked throughout my life great experience great learning with them and i think each day i was growing with working with those esteemed brands with their values with their um, way of uh, portraying their brand value i think everything had really helped me to nurture further in this field and then later <coughs> after almost a couple of years like four five years i realized that <coughs> i'm so so sorry <coughs> i realized that i'm so good at at teaching I'm so good at my concepts. Why don't I try myself to to teach this particular uh, passion? So fortunately, that moment of time, uh, Ministry of um, uh, Small Medium Enterprises, which is also under the edges of government, there was one company called Janvi Institute. So the institute was working for this MSME and they, I have got a chance to teach the woman entrepreneur. So this first photo where I'm putting my cursor, uh, was uh, just an example. This, this is how I interpretation of how I help the um, uh, the women's uh, to to you know to make them motivated to have this small enterprise. You know that India is still in that situation that one corner is still having a great poverty line. So the the motive of this uh, project was to help the women's to have their small enterprises for their survival in fashion. And you know, embroidery, stitching. This is always in the blood of a woman. You cannot change. These are some basic. Uh, I think uh, life, uh, we can say like a life moments where uh, every woman would love to do it. <clears throat> so why don't if woman is good at it, why why don't that lady turn this into 
a passion into our entrepreneurship. And then later I worked with the uh, institution called National Institute of Learning and Academics. They were tied up with Nottingham Trent University and it was very much in sector 44 Gurgaon, this institute. And I held up teaching a lot of, lot of uh, students in fashion. We were teaching BSc in fashion, HND and HNC in fashion. These are my some certificates if you would see. <clears throat> so I have attended a lot of trainings from UK and there was a concept called Pearson's. So I think it is very much still there in the market, uh, BTEC Pearson's. Uh, in Qatar also, we do have institutions. I very well, they're tied up with me. So they are still teaching the Pearson. Pearson book was actually a concept in UK where they were selling high national diploma, which is HND and high national certificate, which was HNC. And there were some levels, as you know, that in um, any foreign universities, they work on level two level. So I taught level one and level two in art and design, where there was a segment for fashion. So that was also very Okay. And then later, I got happily married with someone I never knew. <laughs> so it was completely like a old, uh, old gauge arranged marriage kind of settlement. Never thought of it. But I think my, me and my husband, the string match, and we were very much coordinated with our thoughts. And I got married and settled in Qatar. He had his own business. He ran an IT firm in Qatar. And before that, from last uh, 15 years, he was in abroad only working Singapore, Dubai, and many more places. Um, uh, after marriage, I, because I was, you know, staying with an entrepreneur, so, you know, obviously your mind will change. I came in Doha and I, I really started working with some places, but I realized that this country needs a lot of things, a lot of enhancements in fashion. As you know, it's a Muslim country, so there were a lot of restrictions as well. I started my own dream fashion school and I became the first lady in the Qatar to start international vocational Italian fashion school in, in Qatar. So basically, uh, the pictures you see here right now, this is Sir Burgo Fernando, who is a founder of Instituto di Moda Burgo. We bought a franchise from this guy. He has been running this institute from last 60 years in Milan. I chose Milan because, you know, Milan is a fashion city of the world. And we always look up for such uh, cities, you know, which are so much uh, expert in fashion. So I met him. There were a lot of roller coaster. But how this journey started, I have some points in front of you. <clears throat> so my journey as an entrepreneur began with challenges, ideas, experiments in year 2015. So these are a few things which I wrote. It's very interesting. I will read for you. What were my worries? My worries were I wanted to open my own fashion institute. My God, that to a broad country and especially in Gulf region, I want to open it. How would I do it? I got a little mulsified and I was thinking, how would I do it? It's a Gulf country. Would they accept my concept? Would they like it? Whatever I'm thinking. So these were my worries. But it was not impossible because I was sitting next to one entrepreneur who was beside me and he was none other than my husband. So <clears throat> some supporting stars and his, his, I think, unconditional support has changed my vision with some sip of coffee at that window corner that night. I remember I was with him sipping a coffee. He made me so confident on that day when we were talking and I was just counting the stars in the sky. And he said that, honey, nothing is impossible. Everything is possible. And in business, risk is your friend. So encouragement to accept the failures was my first lesson given by him. I think he, he taught me a very good lesson in life. If you love, if you start accepting your failures, Trust me, that day your life will change. Because the moment you start accepting your failures, your success is few miles away from you. Only standing a building doesn't work. Then my next worry was that, okay, we have a nice building. We started the school, but I missed out on one point. I'm just telling you what are my experiments. So I thought I had a building, I have a setup, but this will not work in this, in this such a Dubai Qatar flashy country. I have to bring some international body after I did a lot of uh, research and market study. So I start loving risk was another lesson and never feel yourself lost. So I think this is very good lesson. Another that, you know, <clears throat> if you're a business person, you have to start loving the risk around you and don't ever uh, leave yourself lost in anywhere because you have to keep a track. So today I am the best version of myself. 
I don't care how others are judging me. Only my work speaks worldwide. And I think this is very important. Love yourself, whatever you are. You are the best version of yourself in all the possible places. No matter you are not a great percentile holder. No matter you didn't perform great in the university. No matter you have a breakups in your life or you never had a great relationship being a girlfriend or boyfriend. These all things are aside. But one thing is very important, which is that you need to keep yourself as a confident person and don't think what others are thinking for you. That will not work because they will not going to pay your rents. They will not going to judge you. They will, their, their mouth will keep speaking because they are sitting and they have nothing to say uh, work. But we people have to understand that we should not lose the focus because of those kind of things in our life. Coming back to next, I think this is a never standing. I think the story was beautiful. So you can see my pictures with my team. We went to Milan for a fashion show. So I've been in Italy. You can see a lot of pictures. I was in a lot of university expo talking about our vocational international institute. We have called some international designers in our academy. Then I have done a beautiful. I was the first woman who actually started our scholarship. So this was a very interesting page for me. Gulf Times is the uh, one of the oldest and best newspaper uh, in Qatar. And uh, we started a, a great uh, campaign in scholarship, which was like design your dream career. This was all my idea with my marketing team. <coughs> Trust me to I want you to give the scholarship to the students so that those who cannot afford or those who 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 are still thinking that we get some platform through my channel, they can get some support. And there were a lot of Arab people, you know, they are still restricted. So they want to learn fashion, but due to some other issues, they are not. I, I'm not saying money is a call here. Money is never a call in these countries, but <clears throat> opportunities is a call. Since it was the first fashion uh, vocational training institute, so I thought that I can start a campaign which will help many people. So in this, there was a student called Amrit Kaur from India. She has actually started from Instituto Margoni in Paris fashion. And she came here and she submitted the design. And you can see the designs down. There were two T-shirts. She designed a T-shirt for a sporting event. I'm sure you most of you know the next FIFA hosting country is Qatar. And this year we're going to have an amazing FIFA. So there are a lot of heavily preparations going on. So take, taking in mind all those things, we, we designed a mood board, which is an inspiration board. And we took some elements of Qatar. So you can see here this mood board. On based of this, she has designed these two T-shirts. And we selected her as a winner. And I given her uh, almost five lakh in Indian rupees as a scholarship to study with us. So I think um, I did a good job that way. We had a judging panel from different places, different expert country, uh, expertise. We also have Lulua Aluwari, who was a president from a sports committee in Qatar. So I bought her purposely as a judge because it was a, a T-shirt thing and they were designing for sporting events. So that's the reason we bring someone from sports also. And they were ladies from fashion and image etiquette's background also. So we bought different, different expert people to judge them up. <clears throat> I think this page is very close to me. You could actually see me everywhere now. <laughs> so the thing is, I was, uh, many blogs have written about me. I was an international jury member for Russian Fashion Festival. Every year I'm associated with them. Uh, Modest Fashion Forum in Dubai, I'm associated with them full time. I have written a lot of blogs. Uh, so far, there were a lot of FM and radio channels who've been keep on interacting with me. Um, you can see my name in Inspiring Women of uh, Qatar. So many places I've been there. Interaction with the students, I think it was always in my forum. I used to support women here also. So we, we do have a forum uh, of women entrepreneurs. So we all are always engaged in supporting each other. And I think this is the recent thing which, which happened in my life. Uh, purposely, I did it due to few reasons. So I'll be honest to you why I did it. I remember in my childhood, uh, there was one of my uncle who said that, you know, she's so beautiful and she deserves to be in the pageant. One of my cousin, you know, she was working for King Fisher at that moment of time. And every time he was demotivating me, oh, this, and I, I was used to get nervous about it. I mean, it's not about beauty, being beautiful. It's, it's about your confidence, about, it's about you as a person. And, and beauty with brain works in this. So today when I did this, he called my dad and he said, congratulations. She was right and I was wrong that moment of time. I'm so happy he realized this real realization. And <clears throat> uh, this is only for 
for for me being a better version of it, we, I got this prestigious title. I'm so thankful to Adiva Innovation and the Mrs. India Earth team because I think uh, this uh, platform is very glorious. We have seen this uh, pageant happening for uh, non-married women, but uh, which, uh, as you know, Harna Sindhu has just uh, barged in the title of uh, Miss Universe. I think she herself is a great epitome of uh, uh, inspiration for many. And <clears throat> I did this to tell my women of India that there is no bar for your dreams. Please dream. We need to dream high. We need to think big. Because if you don't do, why big bull will happen? You know, why Why Air India is still sustained? Why Birla, Birla is still making construction? Why Dhirubhai Amani is still running Reliance? Don't forget, there is something in you. And you're always unique. So last but not the least, Today, before I end up my interaction and I leave from this, my, my beautiful message to all my Mirites currently who are with me and even those who are not with me, don't forget every human on the earth is special. We have one life, do what you like to do. You may have a lot of obstacles and curves, but every curve has curvature and radius. I think I have mentioned this before. Qualifying is not achievement. Carrying yourself to your focus is the final destination. So guys, today, bug up. Don't think that you are not special. Don't think you are not performing good. Don't care about anything. Please do your best self of your version. Do whatever best you can do in your exam. Don't, don't, I'm not saying that you stop studying after my, this presentation. I'm saying you just do your best. Forget about the results. We don't know what the results will be, but I will be happily sleeping in the night that I did my best. Not that best would be 60% also, and that best can be 90% also. So don't judge yourself in this numeric version. I believe just do your best in your life, be consistent, be focused, and it doesn't mean that you stop having fun in your life. Please do that also. It's very important. Be with your friends, be around with everybody, have a good time also, keep your some time for your, for your focuses also, and the journey is beautiful for you ahead. So keep working hard, keep striving for your best. Forget about those small, small things which comes in your brain like a crawler. Tell yourself that I don't want this crawler and tell yourself every night that I'm the best virgin. I don't care what others are thinking. Thank you so much and I hope you enjoyed my presentation. Thank you so much, ma'am. I'm sure we were all really amazed by hear hearing your journey. And I'm sure a lot of students have questions for you. Uh, first. First of all, we have Sadiqsha of class 11th. Hi Sadiqsha, how are you doing? I'm fine ma'am, what about you? Good, good. So ma'am, my question to you is that when did you realize that you want to pursue a career in the fashion industry? Um, honestly, uh, it's, it's a very good question you have asked and a very obvious question. I was very good in maths, like from nursery until 12th. I can show you the bundle of certificates from Mira model in my file. It's still there with me. But you know, in my family, there was too much of notion of being doctors because they were already doctors and engineers in my family. But on the other hand, my dad was running a production unit in fashion. So there were a lot of things around around it, around my life. But I realized that, you know, um, at, at, at the point when I was too much preparing hard in medical and I, okay, I got the ranking also and I was getting it and everything was there. But but you know, my heart was not happy. I was thinking, yeah, I'm not saying that I cannot be a good doctor. I can be, but then maybe my happiness is missing. Why will I compromise my happiness? If I'm not happy today, the rest of the life, I have to become unhappy. So just because that one night when I told you when I had to kind of to take a decision to go for the counseling, I just decided, just don't think. Just, you know, you know, if you don't want it, don't think about it. I want to go NIFT, I want to study. And that night moment, I just decided there's no looking back. Don't think you cannot be a doctor. OK, but I can I can design a great protective uh, clothing for doctors, isn't it? I can still accompany that dream. It's fine. And I have designed certain things for doctors, so it's fine. I'm satisfied today. That's great, ma'am. Uh, next up, we have Shuchi Varma of class 12th. Hello. 
Uh, you're an avid traveler, right? So do you think cult uh, cultures of different countries has helped you out in your career? Well, see, you have to keep uh, yourself updated, right? In terms like, for example, now I'm sitting in a Gulf country. As you know, it's a Muslim country. So there are a lot of constraints in their uh, region and they have opened up. I'm not saying they're not opened up now. It's a very lavish country, very timbery country, Dubai and Qatar. Uh, but it's just that I feel that, you know, if you're even if I'm running a fashion institute today here, uh, we still take care of the length of the garments on stage. If I'm doing it in Milan, I will keep it short. I don't care. But when it's Qatar, I do respect their tradition and cultures. So any country you go, any country, you have to understand, you know, that we have to value their tradition and culture. Because if you are not doing it, for example, a, a simple, simple example, OK, I'm, I'm holding a flag. OK, I'm holding a flag and if I'm not holding the flag in the right way, that's a disrespect for that flag for that country. So you have to be conscious on small, small detailing when you are abroad, specifically when you are abroad. Right, you have to be very careful on your choices or whatever you're doing. I'm not saying it's complicated, but little uh, consciousness is important to work with foreign places worldwide. Yes, ma'am, you're totally right. Uh, next up, we have Naman, our school captain. A very good afternoon to you, ma'am. Good afternoon, Naman. How are you doing? I'm fine, ma'am. My question to you is, as the head of Qatar's first ever Italian fashion school, how are you influencing the fashion industry in Qatar? Can I know your question again? How I'm influencing the industry? Yes, ma'am. Yes, so I think um, this was a very, um, as I said, a decision with a lot of guts. So I have actually broke the stereotype. Uh, there is only one university in Qatar called Virginia Commonwealth University, which is from America. They are doing a bachelor's in design or in fashion design. But uh, except that university in terms of vocational training institution, we are the only one in whole Qatar. I I have changed the rhythm of people. I this vocational center had had made a new new flea in whole Qatar. You know, actually the woman of any age because the term vocational has been used. So after 18, anybody can join this institute. So it has changed the rhythm. There were a lot of ladies who wanted to have a dream. They could not perceive the dream. This academy is very much supporting them to make their dream. I have a ladies of age of 42 also who are doing a courses. You can feel the scenario has totally changed. I have not given very hefty eligibility criteria. I have not given too much of constraint that they cannot take an admission here. Yes. For 12th graders who are coming for international diplomas for two years, three years, yeah, we are accepting the portfolios. But for short courses or one year programs, we are welcoming everybody after 18th who is 10th grade pass. You can very much come and enjoy the vocational facility in fashion. So I think <coughs> it has just changed the curve of fashion studies, fashion education in this country. And I will keep doing that until my breath is there because I feel that we, we really need to come forward to to kind of break such kind of stereotypes, you know, be, because, you know, as we say, rules are meant to break. So if I don't break any of one rules, how does it going to change me as a person? So, yes, I broke the stereotype. Even the women's are coming. Yes, we are. We are still constrained that inside the academy, there are ladies with the abayas, the covering body. So we we kept the classes for male and female separate due respect of the culture. But Still, the good part is that every woman is coming and pursuing their dream. Everybody comes and say, I wanted to do it before marriage, ma'am. I could not do it. Thank you so much that you started this institute. So I think I'm fulfilling a lot of unfigured dreams through this platform. And uh, we are already associated with a lot of big branding exhibitions that I feel that this will going to change a new revolution in terms of fashion education in Qatar. So I think I'm doing a great job. And apart from that, I'm not praising myself, but I'm telling you the truth. You have to study the market before you start any business. So I had actually leaned myself for a year before I started this academy here. We, we were too much onto the research, observing people, understanding their language. You know, I know a little bit Arabic. So I always say shoy shoy. You know, shoy shoy means less little little so it's an arabic language and habibi so habibi means you know like a friend 
So you have to mold yourself as per the country. So I molded myself a lot. I still have a um, translation books with me on my table, even if I'm a head of the school. But you know, you when your clients are coming, you you have to make them feel that you know you're doing something worth. You you're doing something as a lifetime achievement. So I think uh, I think it it is more beneficial for those uh, specifically who were not able to live up to their dreams in fashion. This academy is great platform for all of them, and already it has created a new revolution here. Meenu, I'd like to ask a question on behalf of Sadhna Bhalla, ma'am, because she's not uh, able to come in. Uh, so she's asking, what is the most important memory you have from your school days? Well, ma'am, I think the most beautiful memory was that that when I have got a prefectorial board in Pragati uh, house, because I never thought I was going to get a prefectorial badge. I was always oath about it when I was small. Uh, when I was in grade seven or eight, I used to look up my seniors and I used to think that why don't I become like this and check the nails for everybody? And I, I realized that after being the part of it, when I got selected, I think because of uh, my good performance and all rounder, uh, you all have chosen me to be part of prefectorial board. But I think uh, that board has also changed me because Pragati group was one of those exceptional groups. We had so many interesting people in that group. Uh, so much inspiring and learning people and it had really carved me to absorb the leadership quality. Today, if I'm a good leader because of Pragati House, so thanks to Pragati House and Meera family. That's very sweet of you. And I think in your film, I could notice uh, a cup that you have preserved from the school, isn't it? Yes. 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 That yes. yes. All right. So that's part of you. So if we could just go on with the other questions, please. Yes. Uh, yes, ma'am. So we have another class 11 student, Kanak. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, Kanak. How are you doing? Ma'am, I'm good. Ma'am, my question to you is that being a well reputed fashion educationist, you must have had your fair share of struggles. So how did you conquer those? Yes, very true. The first struggle was that that normally the stereotype of the industry is that that you know, if she's a faculty in the university, let's say, or an institution, she should be having at least five years of handsome experience to teach students. I never had that experience. I was only one year fresher when I entered in teaching. So like in terms of teaching, they will evaluate your number of, um, you know, number of years in the teaching before they land up giving you some position in university or college. Trust me, at that moment of time, I was very young. I was just 24 or 23 like that. And I was like, I don't know whether I'll get selected or not. But you know, uh, that one project which I did in MSME, that had really helped me. Because they were not looking. They just look, looked up my degree. Uh, yes, it plays a role because I, I actually been to a prestigious college. So they seen my degree and they have said, OK, even if you don't have an experience, you can still teach the women because you know the techniques, you know the sewing part, you know all those things, technical parts. So they given me a chance. I think when I went to the interview, remembering that, you know, after that, when I actually approached to a institute associated with Nottingham Trend, there were a lot of questions uh, on interview. <coughs> they were thinking you don't have an experience, this and that, and there were a lot of things. But trust me, my my portfolio, my confidence and my knowledge had beat all the people in that interview. They had nothing, but they had to say yes to me. I told them I can teach. You give me one class as a tester, I will teach. And I did that tester class and it was amazing successful class. And after that, there was no looking back. Whenever there was a board meeting, there are a lot of people with great age group, great experience. I respect them and I do used to listen to them, but they always used to encourage me for my ideas, you know, OK, this is going to be next thing for the students. What is your idea? Because they realize that, you know, the young mind also have young opinion and the young mind also have some some great ideas. So I think you have to sometimes prove yourself. <coughs> so, the, so I think that moment of time I had proved myself <clears throat> because if I have not done that, they have never realized my value. I made them realize my value that moment of time with that small tester class. Trust me, they asked me so many in-depth questions when I was uh, tricking on the board. But I had a great answers to each of them. So I think I carried my confidence, you know. 
even if i am not qualified or i don't have number of years i am technical i have those skills you know i can teach so i have convinced them that the only thing the interviewer was saying me you have to convince us so that we give you this position okay so finally i convinced them and they have given me a position of a assistant faculty so i think uh, sometimes in life when people are doubtful about your thing and they judge you only on number of years of experience that's not the only call sometimes you are so exclusive about yourself that you will tell others you know the others are have no choice but they have to take you you create that scenario for them so i created that scenario and there were no looking back <laughs> they they knew it that she has to come so i came after it of course there was never a looking back uh, there were a lot of challenges during teaching also sometimes you know i used to think that oh my god if i am not able to understand this topic how as a student other will understand you know sometimes there is a pocket or some blazer we are doing it and lot of intrusive uh, technical detailings were there so sometimes i used to do a uh, self practice before i teaching so trust me every lecture like before my lecture i used to do too much of practice so that i will not look unprofessional in front of them because that was also very important you cannot look unprofessional in terms of the students who are looking forward so I, every time i used to prepare my lessons before i do anything so i think all those kind of struggles and hit and trials and this and that had had realized me my importance and i i realized that you know i can do it there is nothing no in my in my field but it's just that you have to be more organized while teaching uh when you are preparing the lessons you know it's always good to to be in the class you know these are journal uh, etiquettes i learned that okay i have a zoom presentation or i have a presentation on a screen today so at least 20 minutes before i'm entering the class and i'm preparing the setup and everything is ready so while the students are entering everything is apt and ready to them and uh, i have my fair notes to distribute to everybody i had everything supporting documents you know if any lessons is going on uh, i had always supporting some machinery with me so that i'm practically teaching them even today also till date if i teach anything if i get a chance because i'm so busy but i always you know when we are speaking normally what is textile what is fabric i will even go back and teach them you know the small small detailings okay this is a yarn this is a fiber this is how it is done this is a simple language you can use a term thread for yarn so you know small small things so i think all this has come to me because those those day by day learning had improved me <coughs> but yes experience do matter i passed on right time i was just 17 uh, there was no gap in the studies ever i was very regular on my studies so on a very good age i actually passed out and i actually got into the industry and everything uh, the good part was that i had an experience in the industry as i told i worked you worked with different brands so i think they they knew it that she practically worked in the industry and she can teach it so they were just testing my testing my teaching ability they were they had no doubt on my knowledge because when they were asking i had so many answers about it and they were the, the answers were not like just like answers very apt answers so i think the hiddles and the struggles and the, all these are part of your life each day you are learning i am currently 33 but in a seat of principal you can imagine a young principal running an institute with a young you know young vision so here my vision is very young but then Uh, at times i behave very mature also i will behave like another 45 year old lady because you have to behave that seat deserves that matureness so yes i was very early and frequent on my progression in my life but even today also sometimes i feel some struggles when i'm taking any decision you know decision making is very important part when you are heading or you are you have a leadership qualities but you are heading one one particular division each decision is very crucial for you so even decision making uh, is very important part uh, you know if you are actually having a leadership qualities and you are running something on your shoulder so sometimes today also i feel okay this is a marketing plan do i have to approve it so i will go into the detail with my team you know what is the possibility of that marketing will it give us the reverse revenue will will going to have you know a great admissions onto this marketing plan will this be successful or not so lot of uh, r and d and meetings and um uh, scratchers and you know a lot of throwing of papers you know uh, scratching and thinking of the idea so i think uh, the struggle and the learning never ends it's a part of life each segment in your life has struggles and each segment has its own learning so just be yourself and do your best okay this is the next question please 
Yeah, next question. We are running out uh, of time. We have Ekagra, class 11th. Hi. Good Kaur. afternoon, ma'am. Fine, ma'am. How are you? Good. Uh, so, yeah, my question to you, ma'am, is uh, the fashion industry is constantly changing and so is the environment of the world. What are your views on sustainability in fashion? Very good question and very, very attempting question of this century. I think uh, I have already been a part of Qatar Sustainability Week. We are constant partner with them in Qatar. We are already engaging a lot of activities in upcycling and recycling. I have recently done a lot of workshop on stages. I am. I feel it's a very conscious movement in in fashion industry also. And um, you know there are a lot of uh, clothing in our wardrobe which we don't care and we don't want to repeat. I think you can repeat. There is no harm onto it. A, it, as far as the sustainability is referred, you can upcycle, cut and chop and make it little different so that you can make use it again if you get bored about it. Okay, if you are not a fashionista, you can still go to the YouTube and see. So it's not a big deal, okay? We all are intelligent people and we can do it. So, and secondly, uh, we, we in our life also normally, we have to have a sustainable choices. You know, our choices, our selection should be also sustainable nowadays. We cannot just waste and harm our mother earth. You know, a lot of chemical compositions are fleeted from the factories. Uh, still, there is a lot of, uh, you know, man-made fibers are being introduced. And now the sustainability has realized us that, real is real fake is fake so we have to respect that realistic version uh, of of textile in our industry specifically uh, i think uh, nowadays people are coming up with the collections which are more sustainable they are going for organic cottons they are going for non woolen silk they are going with those kind of choices which are reusable format so i think this is a very conscious movement for the world this corona had made us realize the value of things around us you know, this 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 corona had not just been a disease across. It has a reminder to all of us that wake up, you know, we, we can't harm our surroundings. Now, it is not just about fashion. It's about every field. Sustainability plays a huge role. And we have to change our mindset and start accepting such choices. So I think um, it plays a great role. And I think it's a lovely question. I liked your question a lot. Thank you. The last question that we have, ma'am, for you is from Himanshi. Good afternoon, ma'am. Very good afternoon. Uh, my, question, uh, my question to you is, uh, what fashion advice would you give to students and adults? I think you guys are already so wonderful. I'm getting very similar question, which the normal PR media asked me. So you're already so, so talented. Wow, kudos to you all. Uh, well, a fashion advice. Being honest to you, <coughs> I was a proper medical student. I was never a fashionista. Okay, never a fashionista. I feel in your wardrobe, you should always have some set of basics. Like, for example, a pair of jeans with a white shirt a basic shirt one piece dresses may you can have like a cotton and fleet dresses for your uh, you know summary dresses for boys you can have like a on to go t-shirts from adidas and all those so you can have that basic wardrobe but you know combining uh, with with the styling part that is something i think people are nowadays improving so uh, i believe that you know there's only one fashion advice that Whatever you are carrying, there should be a great comfort onto it. You cannot just wear anything which is not comfortable to you. And there are a lot of people who are very weight conscious, you know. <clears throat> I'm so thin, I'm so fat, I cannot wear that. I can, you know, there are a lot of ideas. I know when I became fat after my delivery, there was one t-shirt. It was so tight to me after, you know, the delivery has a lot of biological changes. I just chopped the two corners of my t-shirt and I just wore it with a skirt and it became a style. So many, I have seen later, so many girls have done, did that. So I said, I didn't waste it. I recycle it also. And on the other hand, I wear it, I'm comfortable. Now these two slits on the side seams, they have given me a comfort. So I think uh, it's all about what you like to wear, the comfort. There are a lot of people who say, oh, do we have to follow the trend? You are the one who will make the trend. Why you have to follow the trend? You are the one who will make a statement and others would follow you. So just wear what you like, uh, but always remember that, you know, uh, wear 
as per the occasions. Don't wear deflated from the occasion because if you do that, uh, maybe you would not be that confident. You will feel inflated. So if there is an occasion where you feel there is a necessity of wearing a formal, go with that. Nowadays, the hardcore formal is not in. You can still go for semi formals. All right. So I think it's all about your comfort space and just be careful on choices and the occasion when you're wearing anything. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you so much for that question and thank you for the wonderful answers that you have given me. And um, on behalf of the principal, Mrs. Sadna Bhalla, the management and staff members and our dear students, I would like to thank you for sparing your valuable time. I know you're a very busy lady um, for inspiring our students and combining the heart and the head is the mantra that we will take uh, forward and to follow our dreams. Of course, uh, working hard for them is absolutely necessary. And um, thank you so much uh, for the joie de vivre that you have enthusing people and the conviction that you have in yourself and in inspiring others and in the world of fashion. So our blessings uh, to you for having a very, very prosperous career and uh, your being connected and loving your roots is so very touching. Uh, I would uh, now uh, like to present a citation uh, to you for you from uh, on behalf of the principal and uh, this will be mailed to you shortly and uh, again a big thank you to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <coughs> you can read it. So uh, now uh, we will uh, take your leave. I thank all the staff members and the team at Vera Model School um, for being here with us. And I'm sure you have been inspired uh, again uh, by one of uh, the very successful Miraites and how she has carved a niche for herself in the fashion industry and how she took a path less traveled, the road less traveled and made a success for, your, for herself. And so can you. Uh, thank you so much, Ms. Meenu Prasad. All the best for you in the future. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Uh, before I leave, uh, a special thanks to Sadna ma'am, who is not the part of it here. But uh, to even including everybody here today, all the teachers, respected teachers, and uh, all the team members of uh, Mira School, I think uh, my thanks is not enough. Words are not enough. Uh, today, whatever I am, I think because of you. Thank you. That is so sweet of you to say. God bless you and wish you further success in your life's journey. Bye bye. So we will now end the meeting.